Life with Patty, and welcome into my kitchen. And look at we have Agnes. That's that's my mixer's name. My mixer's name is Agnes. We have Agnes out, which means we're gonna have some fun today. We're gonna do some baking because why? Why? Because fall's my favorite season. <laughs> you guys are gonna be like, shut up, Patty. Ooh. Anyways, okay, so we made that pumpkin dessert out of my $10 magazine. Taste of home pumpkin. When I make a recipe from this book, I will not leave the recipe in the description box below. I do not have the rights to these recipes. I can share them, but I don't post them. So if you want the recipe, you go to the magazine Taste of Home Pumpkin Cookbook, and the recipe will be there for you, okay? So, today we are going to make pumpkin cookies with panache frosting. Panache? 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 Frosting? And let me tell you folks, I've never made that kind of frosting before. I don't even really know what it is. Well, we're going to try it because I'm up for new things, you know? Challenge myself. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Okay, stop with it, buddy. I just had my oven go off. Did you hear that little beep? 350 degrees. We are preheated. Okay, so first thing we're going to do is preheat the oven. Check! In a large bowl, right here, we're going to cream the butter and the sugars until light and fluffy. So it calls for one cup of butter softened. So take it out of the refrigerator a couple hours before you start. I'm using margarine today. I find when I bake, for the most part, margarine can be substituted for butter for baking. The reason I do that, folks, simply is the cost. When I'm baking, I most of the time will use margarine. Okay, so we have a cup of um, butter in there, and now we're going to have to put a half of a cup of white granulated sugar. never find the opening. <laughs> Here it is. In the pot it goes. And one half cup of packed brown sugar. Oh good. Hey, move. So when I do that, I always cut my top of my bag nice and neat. I don't like to rip it apart. And I just simply put the cup in there and pack it right in there with the side of the bag. So there's no touching it with your fingers and getting all sticky and such. We're going to put this on the mix. And let this start mixing. Alright. Now, when you have an open bag of brown sugar, it can get hard real fast if you don't store it properly. got the bag out but I thought wrong so a simple Ziploc freezer bag works perfect and this will stay nice and fresh for six months really I, I've kept it like this before and it stays fresh for a long time so we got our two sugars out of the way all right now we're gonna let that start mixing it's already mixing up nice and then we're going to add to that one large egg. Now some people swear you have to let your eggs get to room temperature. I'm not one of them, okay? I've never done that before. They work out just fine, like so. so there's one egg in the pot. The next thing we're gonna put in is a can, not a can, I'm sorry, one cup of the canned pumpkin. This is a high commodity right now, folks, let me tell you. I think we've talked about this already. But I had my daughter-in-law pick it up in the town over from us. And a, one of my customers at work gave me a can. And then I had two of these small cans. So I now have one small can and seven big cans. So I might be set. What do you think? And I still have a little bit in there, and I'm going to save that. <clears throat> Why did I throw that in there? Oh. <clears throat> That's why I wash so many spoons. Go 
was like, throw it in there before I need to. Okay, so the egg blended in with the sugar and the butter, and now in goes the pumpkin. <laughs> Thought you were gonna get away, did you, little guy? All right, let's put this pumpkin here to mix up with that. And while this is mixing, I just start adding my spices and all that as it's mixing. Okay, I don't, uh, and I don't pre-mix my flour with baking powder and all. No, I just add it all to the pot. I've always done that, <clears throat> and it works just fine. So the next thing we have is some vanilla extract, and we're going to put in two teaspoons of flour. Uh, flour. Oh my God! Last time it was an onion. This time it was flour. Good gravy, Patty. Two teaspoons of vanilla extract, okay? Now, if you're going along with me and you want to make this, hey, as you're watching it, write it down because I'm going to tell you the measurements as we go. I'm just not going to post it in the description box, okay? And then we're going to go with the baking powder and baking soda and cinnamon, all one teaspoon of each of those three ingredients. So one teaspoon of baking soda. <clears throat> you know what? What did I use? Oh, I used a half a teaspoon in here. So I gotta add another two of these because I, instead of the teaspoon, I used a half a teaspoon. It probably would have been just fine. All right, so we got our baking soda. Now we're going to do a teaspoon of baking powder. <clears throat> and a teaspoon of ground cinnamon. Oh, <laughs> we almost had a problem here, folks. Look what I got. <gasps> Could you imagine if I put that in there instead of cinnamon? Oh my gosh. Hold on. <laughs> now I got the right stuff. <laughs> oh my gosh. I'd have had to fake the whole time. No, I wouldn't have. I would have told you the honest truth. All right, so we need a teaspoon of ground cinnamon. Well, you know that this is not a staged video, right? This is raw, people. Patty in the raw. <laughs> Oh my goodness. And a half a teaspoon of salt. Okay. All right, what else do we got here? We have to put in two cups of all purpose flour. You got it there, Senor. You betcha. Get all these things out of my way that I've already used. You know, I've told a few of you this, but I would love to be on the Food Network cooking channel, the baking channel for the bake-offs for um, the holidays. But I got a lot to learn before I get there, you know. Can't be having cumin instead of cinnamon. Can't be having an onion instead of an egg. Uh, uh, uh. Then they just shake their head at me and be like, oh my goodness. Okay, in goes the flour. Two cups. That's what they said. I'm gonna let that mix up. How much is this supposed to yield? It says it makes about seven dozen. I'm pretty sure it's not going to make seven dozen because I probably make my cookies too big. If it doesn't make seven dozen of cookies, I'm going to be making cookies forever. at home and you have walnuts or almonds or whatever you have it's okay use that 
And I'll tell you another little secret, okay? I got half almond, I mean, I got half pecans in here and half walnuts. Nobody's gonna know. Maybe if you are a judge on the Food Network, you might know, but the girls at work are not gonna know. And I didn't put three quarters of a cup, I put one and a third cup. <laughs> because I wanted to use the rest of the bag up. <laughs> so, and there it goes. They're just gonna be a little nuttier than normal. <laughs> Get it? <laughs> oh my gosh, Patty. Okay, do you wanna know what time it is? It's eight o'clock at night. Do I normally bake at eight o'clock at night? No, but I want to, I promised Lilia that I was gonna make some cookies. Well, actually, she asked for a pumpkin dump cake, but I just made it a dump cake with you guys, the apple caramel one. And there's all kinds of great dump cakes, not just one in the world, there's all kinds. So I'll make a pumpkin dump cake, but it's gonna be a while. So we're gonna have pumpkin cookies, and I'm sure she's not gonna kick them to the curb, you know what I'm saying? All right, so we are going to lightly grease that. How long are we gonna cook these bits? that baby's for nine to eleven minutes we're gonna put 12 because my oven cooks kind of not as hot not as hot as most you know what i'm saying i can't remember where i got this cute little spatula look at how tiny this see this little spatula but it's great for getting the um, cookie dough off of the mixer, the blender, what do, you, what do you call this, the beater. Remember back in the day when they didn't have these and you had to hold one in your hand? Oh yeah, my brother and I, we were always right there when my mom would finish or my grandma would finish wanting the beater to lick the beater. And my grandkids, because that's how you got one now. What's a poor kid supposed to do with that? So one of them gets that, and then I dip a wooden spoon in here, and the other one gets a wooden spoon. That's what you gotta do, you know, modern times. All right, Agnes, you did your job well. Thank you. We'll be back to make frosting with you soon. I just thought of something. Never mind. Okay, so I have my handy dandy little scooper here. I don't know how I have existed with life before my scooper and Agnes. Agnes and, I don't know, Lucy, I don't know. All right, we're gonna make little dogs with that. Oh, they're so pretty, they're so cute. Well, we, we might get seven dozen out of these. Holy smoly macaroni. You guys know by now I say that a lot, huh? <laughs> oh. And then after I've got this all made, I'm going to come back with you folks. We're going to make some frosting. Then we're going to frost them. Ooh, this might be a long video. Well, we got 12 cookies on here. 12 cookies going in the oven at 350 degrees for 12 minutes. I'll be back with you to make some frosting in a little bit, okay? All right, I'm starting to make this frosting for the cookies. And ooh, there it is. So we got one, we have three tablespoons of butter and one quarter cup of brown sugar. And we're gonna melt this and let it um, boil for one minute. Then we're gonna take it off of the heat and let it cool for 10 minutes and then we will add it to our mixer with the rest of our ingredients. Okay you guys you saw that I boiled my I brought to a boil a light boil my sugar and my my brown sugar and my butter and then it's said to cool for 10 minutes which I've done and now we're going to put that into our mixing bowl So I've never made this kind of frosting before, and what I like about this is it's, it's getting me out of my comfort zone, you know? It's, it's making me try something new. 
So now it wants a quarter cup of 2% milk, but let me tell you what I'm gonna do. I am gonna use a quarter cup of this half and a half because I had it left over from my chicken chili and I don't want it to go to waste and I don't know what else I would use it for. So I'm gonna put that milk in here, put us back on Agnes here. We're gonna let this uh, mix for a minute. And let's see what else it has to stay in here. Okay, and then what we're going to do is we're going to add in the confection sugar, which is powdered sugar. We're going to add anywhere between two and a half to three cups, just to get to the consistency of a nice spreadable frosting. I tell you folks, I, I really uh, will be honest with you. Once you've had homemade frosting, it's really hard to eat that frosting out of the, the little cans from the grocery store. I mean, they work in a pinch, but, you know, people will say, how easy is it to just do a cake mix and get the frosting? Well, you can do that, and that's absolutely fine. But you will notice a difference when you make your own homemade frosting. Big difference. And I'm the first to admit that it's kind of a pain, and so sometimes I'd rather just get that jar from the store. Okay, I'm going to put in one cup of powdered sugar and let that start mixing. This really doesn't make a lot of frosting, let me tell you. I'm used to making a batch of frosting, you know what I mean? So, <laughs> I don't know. Just going to do what the thing says here. And, you know, I was going to use a piping. Let me tell you what I was going to do. I was going to pipe on my frosting, but I'm going to change my mind on that due to the size of how much frosting we have because uh, I think what they're going for is just a nice light layer, not a big glob on there. So we're going to go ahead and put our second cup of sugar in here and let that mix up. And we're just simply going to, we are going to spread it on with a knife because uh, it's too much if I was to use the pastry pan, or the pastry bag. Then it gets too much frosting and I'd have to make way more frosting. So we're going to veto out on that, okay? And we are going to go for a whole third cup. Let me tell you, I baked the cookies and... Um, I have the last batch in the oven right now. It did not make any seven dozen. It made three dozen plus three more. So 39 cookies is what it made. It didn't make any seven dozen. So, just so you know. You know, this is why I have a million uh, spatulas, because I think I've got like six over there, and I don't have a dishwasher. This is my dishwasher right here. Or my dishwasher sitting in there in the recliner. <laughs> he helps out with the dishes. Uh, and I'm not going to complain about that. We're going to whip this now. Okay, you ready? Alright, I think we've got it folks. We're going to settle on three cups of powdered sugar for this. I've never tasted this. I'm going to taste it with you folks right here, right now. It is um, definitely a different texture with the brown sugar and... Um, let me taste it. Hmm. Not going to kick that to the curb, am I? <clears throat> pretty darn good. Yes, I would. It's different than just your vanilla frosting or something, but you know, there's things in the world that I haven't tried before, and this is one of them. <laughs> All right. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to frost one cookie. We'll have us a little taste test, and I'll turn off the video camera and I will finish up. Okay, so hold on. 
But I do want to show you how pretty the cookie came out. And I can't imagine seven dozen cookies. They would be more, less than half this size. They'd be little droplets. So it's a, it's a pretty cookie. I'll give it that. It definitely has a brown sugary taste to the frosting. My first time ever to make these cookies from this recipe. I have made pumpkin cookies before. I've never added pecans or any kind of nut to my pumpkin cookies before. So this is a new one on me. So let's go ahead. Mm. Mm, that's delicious. Of course, I do love pumpkin. I do love cinnamon. The cookie itself is very fluffy, very light. The frosting is a little dense. I probably could have added a little more milk to it or less sugar, but it's very good. All right, you guys, I hope you enjoyed this recipe. I'm very happy with it. So thanks for tuning in. Hope you will give this a try and try it. I'm gonna go finish this cookie. Give one to the hubs, and we're good to go. All right, you guys have a good day, and I'll see you back here again tomorrow. Bye-bye.